Marcel Eckhart announcing that Immanen has won. Thank you, dear first wreck. Became one into break. The man who turns 50 years of age in December this year. With him, it's a case of been there, seen that, done it. Of course, as you get older, your skills are supposed to deteriorate. But we saw at the European Championship, 53-year-old Ralph Suke winning the, the eight-ball title there. Maybe Imminent has got one more big title in him. Francesco, it's your choice. Francesco Sanchez Ruiz. He was the winner of the Derby City Classic nine ball back in January. And last year, two Euro Tour events in Slovenia and Turkey. I think he's a, a more dangerous opponent now than he's ever been. Yeah, he's going to run the cue ball two rails behind the six here, trying to double bank the one to the bottom rail. Didn't quite get the one, I don't think, where he wanted, but decent. Difficult kick shot anytime the ball's out in the middle of the table. Really got to find a good path, and he's got to slow kick this to t get the English to take. Yeah, that's the problem with that. You, if you hit it firm Ball's on the strong. slick table, the no second contact. rail doesn't take the side spin as much, and you miss a lot of kick shots. <clears throat> and start the clock, please. And now this is just the kind of opportunity you want to, to bed into a match. Ball in hand. The ball's nicely spread. Get that cue arm lubricated. Yeah, and really four easy starters here on the one. The two leads to the three. He'll just go forward a hair. That way he can follow down for the four. Ruiz, of course, it always tells you how difficult it is, those big wins. Still searching for that that huge win. Of course, that Derby City Classic nine ball, it's a pretty big win in itself. Flirted with the six ball here, and I don't know it's if he can pocket please. this four or not. He may have to really cheat the pocket and maybe even a touch of inside English to try and throw the four back towards the pocket a bit. We could get at it. And that's one thing about Ruiz. You rarely ever see him where he doesn't look loose. I think that's a great sign for these big events. And it's a big bonus. Caught that a little heavy to the pocket, so it cost him a little little bit of movement on the cue ball. And now he's gotten a little funny. He's got to kind of slow roll this a, a little bit. You don't mind taking a little angle on the seven. That way you don't sacrifice much on the six. He is one of those players 
FSR, who doesn't walk around the table, he bustles around the table, always full of vim, vigour and enthusiasm. He loves playing pool, he loves doing well, and he will thoroughly enjoy the way the opening rack went. So it's the last match. Far, we've seen some varying matches. Ko Ping Yi coming through against his younger brother Ko Ping Chung, 7 4. Eklund Kachi was beaten by Dennis Okolio. And our latest winner is Abdullah Al Yusuf. Yeah, and I'm with him now for Abdullah. Many congratulations. A fantastic win against Nils. How happy are you after that? Um, thank you. I'm really so happy. Uh, Nils is a great player, he's a great person. I respect him, I watch him since a lot of years and uh, really I feel good I'm exciting to continue in the tournament and you've made a great impression on the matchroom nine ball series you had a fantastic world championship and you're continuing your great form here thank you so much uh, and thank you for uh, the opportunity and the invitation uh, matchroom they are doing a, a big big hard work here so uh, we are thankful um, and thank you for everybody uh, make this one happen. Abdullah, we love having you here. Many, many congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. What a gentleman and a really good performance as well to overcome a giant of the game. Neil's fine. That's right. Uh, thank you. It's the kind second of a soft spoken and Francesca always Al Yusuf, but uh, brings a big game. And another guy that brings a lot of game here, Ruiz, to break in game number two. He usually won't back off the break much either. Nine ball moving cross side a bit. Doesn't really have the greatest offensive shot on the two, but pretty handy in a couple different safety options. He can place the cue ball behind the nine, moving the two across. I may edge the two and put the two underneath the nine and the four and try and come a couple rails behind the eight. May just come straight across the table using the, just the four and nine. Uh, he really would like to try and play the cue ball behind the eight, but you don't want to play a dangerous safety that could get away from you. Extension, please. It looked like to me he could edge the two, even maybe with some right English and just come straight across the table. That's a good view there. Maybe, maybe that's hard to do, but he can contain the two or the cue ball behind the nine. Trying to get behind that eight ball. He's always been full of ability. I think over the last couple of years, he's found that added something. A new mojo, if you like. And I think he's a lot more daunting to play now than he was a couple of seasons back. Well, you talk about ability that I hear. Of course, all his titles will tell you what his ability is about, but if you ever got to see him play in his real prime, he's one of the few that I've ever seen to, to really just kind of dominate tur tournaments. He did it in his first World Nine Ball Championship, his U.S. Open titles. A little bit off angle shot here across for the three. And he's overcut that. Kind of one stroked it, to be honest with you, and maybe flooped the nine. Okay, so this two should go in off the nine in the side. We'll see where the nine ends up. So 
Such a good punter, Sanchez Ruiz. I'm surprised that one missed the target. Wow, well, yeah. I thought he had a more open pocket in the in the side than maybe it was a little closed off by the nine, but how pure did he hit that two ball? Maybe a six nine looming. Another one of those players trying to get back to their form in a lot of time playing a lot of events the last few years. Extension, please. He's gotten a little on the wrong side trying to play the six to get shape on the seven, so it should be the six nine to end game two. Mika Imonen, second play. Let me tell you something about Mika Eminent. Jeremy Jones is quite correct. His career record is absolutely terrific. He's got so many accolades, so much won. Player of the decade in the 2000s. And before this match, we got Mika's assessment of this event and where he lies in the game of pool right now. Yeah, it's obviously great to be, even though it was a late invite, but uh, somebody dropped out and I'm just happy to be here. It's a, it's a great lineup. It's going to be a good challenge. Masters is funny because I got a little bit of a jinx and I have to like get, get that monkey off my back. I, I haven't won it yet. I've been in the finals once, third once, but uh, never won it. So it'd be nice to get that title. I feel like my form is getting there. You know, I've been uh, finishing high in some events and I'm, you know, obviously high in the rankings. That's why I'm here. And uh, it'd be nice to uh, break through and get, get a, a win. I love Gibraltar. It's amazing weather. The people are very nice. The food is excellent. I guess there's a lot to see. Francisco Ruiz, he's been playing great, phenomenal player. He's, he's very strong, mentally strong. I'm an experienced player, so uh, I'll try to outmaneuver him. Thank you, Lee. Third rack. We all squared the run rack each. Mickey in one to break. Quite funny that Mickey Eminent using the phrase trying to get a monkey off his back. What better place to do that than Gibraltar, a place that's famous for monkeys at the top rock. Yeah, I hope I get a chance to to say something to those monkeys. But it's interesting to me that, you know, in his heyday, you know, maneuvering, as he said it in an interview there, outmaneuvering his younger opponent, that wasn't ever much of a consideration for for Mika. He would make him a, on the maneuvering side of things, but then he would back it up running several racks when he got back to the table. So age will change a player a bit. He was mentioning the fact he never won the World Masters but came close. That was in 2008 in Las Vegas. Lost out to Alex Pagulai in 8-6. And the big turning point in that match, I recall, was a really unfortunate illegal break. OK, a swerve shot, which is a little harder to predict on the slick table. I hit that sweep. And Meek has always excelled at the swerve shot. It's not something that comes up every game for sure, but when it does come up, it's good to have the tool. Okay, and this is another one he used to really excel at, having to roll a ball in the side pocket like here. And he's overcut it, just a skosh. At the risk of repetition, and I will say this time and time again over the next few days, these centre pockets give you nothing. They are unforgiving in the extreme. Yeah, we, we usually just say they're brutal, right? That's the word in pool we use a lot. Double bank here. He's got to get the snooker, though, an open two ball. He may get fortunate, and he did. So we should see the Iceman going to the air here. I 
Yeah, that was overhit a bit. You know, the one thing you want if you don't get the snooker is to put your opponent froze on the back rail. And without that collision he had, cue ball would have been up off the end rail quite a bit. Interesting little shot here. He's got to come across. He may bump the, the brown, but I don't like putting a lot of speed on this shot at all. There is a path between the seven and three, but. I like kind of easing this ball in. Well, he's going to get below the three and he's going to be just fine. What a confident player, right, Phil? Yeah, and I think he's more confident now than he's ever been. And it's such an invaluable asset. It's intangible. But it makes an enormous to a player's success rate. Yeah, any sport, but especially the stationary sports, right? Confidence is probably 75% of the game, especially at this level. Yes, if you've got a certain quota of skill, which all of these guys have, and you add confidence into the mix, then you are dangerous. May have overran the cue ball touch there. This could get very, very touchy with the eight ball being there. Looks like he may have to go into a piece of the eight if he goes forward with the cue ball. Not a whole lot of angle to really stun the cue ball or draw it a couple rails either, so... We'll see how he addresses the cue ball. Well, he's going forward. Well, he got it now. He, now he needs it to slow down. Oh, man. He expected contact on the eight there, Phil. He may have to play a real first shot here. To get over. Showing off the power. Hey, this shot is a little tricky because to get past the side, you have to put a little into the cue ball off of a thin shot. So easy to overrun. He may go back and forth here and play the nine in the lower left. Awkwardly tucked under the side cushion, just an element of doubt. So that was a no doubter in terms of the nine ball. A really good rack run by Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, who takes an early 2 1 lead.
the brightest lights in the world of pool are here at the Europa Point Sports Park. Just down there on the left, there's an absolutely massive gun. You might be able to just see it overlooking the ocean. Well, you could also say the big guns are inside. The big guns of nine ball, including Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, who's two ahead, hoping for more as he breaks off in rack four. Well, Jeremy, you didn't hold back on that one. No, he rarely does, actually. There's a few of them. Alvin is the same a lot of times. Niels very rarely backs off much. And, of course, SVB, nobody hits him better when they're unloading. Let's look to see if he can squeeze the two by the nine. It looks pretty touchy to me. And, really, he'd like to shoot at the kiss shot on the nine coming off the two to try and pocket the nine. But... He wants a safety involved in that as well. Doesn't want to just openly go for that. Extension, please. We can see from that camera angle, at that angle, you can use the rail a little bit, but it's a little harder to aim because it's just not something you're used to doing, trying to use the rail so much, especially when you're cutting the ball. If you're hit, uh, you know, facing it a little more head on, a little easier to figure out where to hit it if you're going to use the rail a bit. But and the reason why he's really considering this, not a very easy safety at all. Looks like he's going for the kiss shot. Yeah, that was always tough. Well, the only consolation here, at least he's left the cue ball close to the side cushion. And we know about the, the difficulty of potting to the middle bags. Yeah, it looks like the six makes it pretty hard to miss, though. Not wanting to use the six here, but really the only way to miss it is shoot it into the right point just like he did actually and sometimes Mika does that he gets down and really doesn't take as many pre-strokes you know he kind of one strokes certain shots and you know he still rarely misses but it seems like that's the common denominator in some of his misses a two ball on the side uh, I believe it was the second game maybe that he also missed, kind of one-stroked it a little bit. Oh, he definitely wanted to pocket the two now in a jam. So often you see this where cue ball and object ball are so close together and you're cutting back into a blind center pocket. So often you see a player undercut and that's what he did. Yeah, I don't know if he has a piece of this at all. That, no, he doesn't. That's a great camera view there. and Trying to create some luck. And he's gotten the two to the back cushion, so he's got to be happy. His shot on the seven, very difficult judge, not only being so far away, but anytime the two's near the rail right there, you could easily catch a double kiss. If you try to avoid the double kiss, you hit the two too thin and, and don't make the seven. Oh, he hit it. He's going to like this.
Hard to say if you got too much draw on that or, or not enough. Definitely didn't want to contact the six. Oh, let's run. He may need it to run more. That was not an appetizing shot, but it was really well played. It is 2 2. Keenly contested this match. Mika Imminent back on level terms. You know, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz is one of the brightest personalities on the pool tour. And we know what he was doing to us earlier because he always does the same thing. He smiles. Yeah, I'm really excited to stay here again. It's one of the biggest tournaments in the world. It's really special, especially here in Gibraltar because it's really close to, to Spain. Too many fans come, so it's, it's gonna be fun. The last year was so good for me. I won two year tour. I, I play so confident, so this year I'm really focused. Mika is a good, uh, is a good player. He's like a legend in pool, but now he's in form. He's playing really good, so I had to play my best. It's like a dream, especially all the matchroom event is like a dream. But the master is a special tournament. Of course, I want to win, but I prefer to stay focused round by round. So I stay focused in the in the first round. Yeah, I think Frank he was right to describe Frank. Mika Imminent as a legend so in the game. When you think in 2001. Imminent won the World Nine Ball Championship in Cardiff, Wales, and then that same year he was runner up in the US Open to Corey Jewell. That would have been some double. US Open and World Championship in calendar year, Jeremy. Yeah, and he was just an unstoppable Corey Jewell in that final. We all know what the score in that match was, and you'll never see that again. It was an 11 0 clip. And, uh, but then he went on to do something that not. Many have done one back-to-back -back U.S. Open titles and did it two different ways. Went undefeated the first year. The second year, he lost his first match to Chris Bartram, if I remember correctly, another fine player from the Ohio area. Lost that match hill-hill, if I remember correctly, and then went through the one-loss side to capture his second U.S. Open title. So could have three if it wasn't for Corey. Yeah, that second U.S. Open was a triumph. Not just of skill, but of stamina. You're quite right. Basically, came through the one lost side of the draw, and he won 14 matches. Yeah, that's 14. Yeah, that's what you have to do in a 256 when you lose your first. It's 14 in a row. Been fortunate enough to do that a couple times. It wasn't ever a U.S. Open though, and this man here. And I was there in Cardiff when he won us. World nine ball title in 2001 and it was it was another one of those tournaments he just dominated I mean there of course he had a few close matches but it seemed like to me there weren't many close at all he always played well in the Moscone Cup as well also Yes, his appearances for Europe well into double digits in the Moscone so, Cup. And on one occasion, he was voted MVP. 2008, that was. Yeah, that was in Malta. Me game one. The win is still. And even now, 14 years later, he's showing that the Finn remains formidable. Delighted to get a late call up here, the Iceman. There's that notable performance, the world champion in 2001. As I said before, he will bring up his half century in December. You've got to be 40 to be in the BCA Hall of Fame. He was elected into the Hall of Fame at the age of 41, again underlining his status within the sport. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, there's still many players. And I was actually talking to Niels Fahan about that. I asked him his age because I was thinking, why isn't he in the Hall of Fame? I'm, I'm sure it's going to happen one day for Niels. But, I mean, he is missing a U.S. Open title. But, but I mean, it's hard to win. It's, can't everyone win them, right? Well, Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, he is a former European nine ball champion in 2016, overcame Joshua Filler in the final, and he was world junior nine ball champion in 2010. Current nine ball ranking, that's pretty impressive, number 11. Thank you, Rex Six. We gave one in this leading the match for two in a break. Man, and Q Sports, it's been an amazing year with Shane winning the World Pool Championships. We saw what Ronnie did just this past week on the snooker side of things. But, you know, sport brings up some great occasions. And what Mika talked about earlier, this is a title that has eluded him. And it wouldn't surprise me if he gets gets in gear here this week and, and takes it down. Of course, it's got to start here beating a, a very tough Spaniard. Please. Thanks. We've got a little bit of feedback in the auditorium. So, Marcel Eckhart, the, the referee from Germany, quite rightly asking for the clock to be stopped. <laughs> Thankfully, the noise has abated. Yeah, you can be as great as you want to be, but you can't predict everything. He's got to make a nice shot here with the draw stroke coming two rails. Oh, he's hit it perfect. Besides getting straight in on the three, maybe. The four's over the pocket, so no problem. Okay, he's got to make a decision here. Does he lay up for the side pocket on the five ball or does he come above it? Really can't argue either. The six does have both corners so he can fall below the eight for the six in the lower right. another one of those side pocket shots so you have to be pretty perfect in the singles match in the Moscone and, and his MVP run and of course Europe winning that event but man he played well the entire team did though for Europe in our previous match we saw one of the giants of European pool Niels Fein fall at his opening hurdle and Mika Imminen looks like he might not do that he's looking good he leads Francisco Sanchez Ruiz 4 2.
That is David Alcady, twice winner of the World yep. Pool Masters. Thank you. And of course, a firm friend of break. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz. Not just a, a friend, a teammate. FSR and Alcady team up on a regular basis for Spain in the, the World Cup of Pool, which is coming your way, by the way, from Brentwood in Essex in England in mid June. Yeah, that's more of the break shot. I think these players are wanting. Watch the one track around the table. But they're going. I like the players that are trying, you know, that are breaking and not making the one. I mean, we saw Fortunsky make the one quite a few times, but put a lot of racks together, getting shots. I think I simplify this. I don't go crazy on this first one ball. He's going to have to kill the cue ball nicely here. You can do it with inside or outside. I think on the slick table, I like outside English, which would be left, trying to throw the ball in. I'll tell you one thing, Jeremy. You could never accuse Eminem of being ponderous. A really quick player, isn't he? Yeah, he always has been. Take a little more time on shots that he feels needed maybe making a decision but really not not taking much time when it comes to pulling the trigger and that when he played his best though that's kind of what he did he just kind of ran players over at times super high gear super great shot maker another one of those that when he rolled out I've passed a few knowing that I was just a big underdog to make it, but he proved me that to where I should have shot, I'll tell you that. <laughs> All right, that one slid a little bit, so he's going to get a little steeper on the eight than he wanted, but should be okay. Now, if you need a graphic illustration of the four-inch pockets we've been repeatedly talking about, that shot was it. Four and a half inch, that goes. Yeah, and it was Extension, hit. It please. was hit up the rail, a decent piece you could see. But coming middle of the table, that's where the four-inch pocket is really going to show up. The object ball's near the side rail. You know, for these guys, they're going to pocket most balls. Uh, but from the middle of the table, they're missable. It might not transpire this way, but that had the look of the quintessential turning point. Mika Iman was two pots away from a 5-2 lead, but the eight ball refused to drop, and Francisco Sanchez Ruiz is now just one behind Iman's lead, reduced to 4-3. Yeah, and breaking feel. Yeah, and I, I think this is what players are talking about as far as they want the tighter pockets. When a ball's not hit like it's supposed to be, it's supposed to stand up. That's exactly what happened there in game number seven on the eight for Mika Eminent. Definitely see a pro Ruiz crowd. Where he got back on the board there. So... This is a, a really busy time for Pool. We've talked about the World Cup of Pool, yep. the fact that Francisco Sanchez Ruiz is a regular, Mika Imanen is a former winner, alongside Pedri Makinen for Finland. We've got the US Open coming up in Atlantic City, the, the big one, the Moscone Cup in Las Vegas, and the European Open as well in Germany to come. And now we're concentrating on the massive invitation event that is the World Masters. Thank you, the eight, Frank. Francesco Sanchez Ruiz is trailing 4-3 and Blueprint. So Ruiz has made the one on the break in the side, each of his breaks. And that one caught the point. It's coming across near the cue ball. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's going to be a perfect angle to drop on the two and 
get restarted here in game number eight. It's going to have to get nice shape on the four here later in the rack to get on the five. That's about the extent of any tricky work. A lot of this sport in nine ball is just maintaining, right? It's got like a grind. You just got to keep pocketing balls. I'm not sure he can get to this three, so the line of, oh my, huge mistake from nowhere, really. Tried to come one rail between the four and nine. Kind of one-stroked it, though feel and a lot of times when you do that your speed is off and believe it or not that's what caused the miss on the line and the cue ball if he's a little smoother through impact he gets in between the four and nine and gets a shot on the three well that was remarkable he wanted no contact whatsoever on the nine in the end he got a four ball contact a real blunder and now he's got to go to the air with the jump he doesn't have to i mean there is the guys these days, though, they're so good with the jump cue. It's hard to argue this play, but there are some nice ways to kick at this ball. All right, these shots, you have to aim a little thicker, usually, because the ball's in the air, so it cuts easy. So, yeah, the overcut is a lot. That's a very common miss with the jump cue. You're used to aiming a certain way on the ball, like a normal shot, but... You have to understand when the ball's in the air, it's going to hit on top of the three. So that always makes the ball cut easier. Anything could have occurred there. As it is, the outcome for Sanchez Ruiz is more than acceptable. Yeah, Mika's close to this, though. He should get the three below the front and be able to kill the cue ball up the table on the top rail. He may even come to the middle of the top rail, a little left of it even, maybe trying to use the nine and the four. Decent. A lot of times at this level though, when you let them cue the ball nicely, they figure out a, a pretty good return safety in this, this type of situation. Not sure how easy this one is though. Not sure really where he's going. Is he banking this? I think he is. Sweet shot. Considering where he's from, Jeremy, I should have shouted Olay when that one went in. I wouldn't doubt somebody in the crowd did. I think Eminence thinking, oh dear. Yeah, and the only thing he could have done, you know, that type of shot there, I think you're always getting the three to the back rail. You just got to play the cue ball a little more on the top rail. You know, if, if Ruiz can't hit bottom English on that bank shot right there, he's probably not going to be able to shoot it. Gotten a little straight, so May with the nine near may not move the cue ball much at all. Oh, he did draw it. The way things are going, the closing match of this round could be... These feelings imminent when he feels aggrieved about one or 
things going badly for him. You know about it. And when he was at his best, Jeremy, I'm sure you'll agree, he was fiercely intense. Oh, very, 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 yeah. Thank you. Thing nine, Frank. You could feel what he was trying to do to you, that's yes, for that's sure. That's reached a break. <laughs> Played right him many, you. many times. And when he was in his prime, you just had to take it away from Mika. That was just about how, anyway, one of the only ways you're going to win. He's hit those square, but he's depending on a nice shot on a two ball, maybe a three ball, depending on what he makes. If he continues to make the one on the side, it's a little more gambling. I would have to entertain just taking a hair of speed off if I was Ruiz there, Phil. Looks to me he he can bank the two back straight up the table, run the cue ball off the right side rail, and then back behind that small wall of balls, that being the three, five, eight, nine. Just straight top English. Uh, I don't know if the cue ball is going to get there. Kind of came up off the shot quickly and caught a lot more of the two ball than he wanted. Technical. What's that? Yeah, just take it off. Just stop the clock for us, please. If it's bothering you, you can take it off. It's you. <laughs> Think Eminent's got a yeah. problem with his microphone. Take it off, yeah. So the referee's no saying, just take it off. Just take the cable off. That's fine with you. So Eminent is just about to be not wired for sound. Yeah, well, like you said a moment ago, though, we can tell what he's thinking. And we don't have to clock. hear it. Thank you. I must say, I always like watching a player who wears his heart on his sleeve. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we can go, you can go buy a robot at the store, right? I was just going to say, and I didn't want to jinx him, that back in the day, that was pretty much a cold-blooded hanger for Mika. And I'd love to just see him commit, you know, to his little process, the and a little more of the same each shot. It just seems like uh, pre-strokes differ a little bit, maybe affecting the timing. It's played well, though. But he knows that he's got to bury those types of shots to win any matches in the World Pool Masters. So pay attention to the cue ball here. Now the five does go in both the lower pockets, so seven's over the side. Main thing here, stay off the rail with the cue ball. Extension, please. The pool pendulum swinging one way and then the other. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz in front for the first time since 2 1. The scoreline now. 
Francis Fries to break, leading by five frecks to four. The question here in Gibraltar, will Francisco Sanchez Ruiz pull away or has Mika Eminen something left in the tag? Awfully square hit on the rack, but a kiss on the cue ball. I don't know if he's got a cut on the three or not. Looks pretty thin from here. He's pocketed. Three on the break. You could hear him hit those. And this has gotten super thin here, so probably some type of soft safety kind of. I just don't think it's natural to get behind the nine so much, but maybe you just use the seven, maybe go on top of the nine with the cue ball, putting the three out the top rail there. Again, I don't know if you can really easily get behind the nine without turning the three ball loose a little so I would I think I'd go at the nine with the cue ball just yeah see if you well he may get a kiss but he's gonna leave a little piece and I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt the ice man goes for this long rail bank It appears the bank goes, maybe not. That's a better angle. I thought he had enough room, and that's what he's looking at now. Extension, please. He's got to kind of cut it and stiff the ball a little bit, so it'll have a little bit of speed if he does go for the bank. Otherwise, he may just have to mm, try and leave East long somehow. Try and edge this ball, come up the left side of the table. Uh, he caught that ball. He fluked one in, though. Shots like that, incidents like that, can make such a, a wholesale difference, especially when they're taken advantage of. Yeah, that was a beauty there, and most players wouldn't have shot at that. They would have tried to get the cue ball by the eight for a safety, but that was hit really well with a lot of confidence, too. Didn't baby it, but didn't bang it. It's always a scary shot on the slick table. It can easily turn over on you and scratch in the upper corner. But speed pretty good, and we should have a tie ball game here shortly. The inventive double from Mika Eminen made all the difference there. Yes, he had a little bit of fortune to be in that position, but nevertheless, the way he exploited that was excellent. It's now 5-5. This is going to be the closest match of the round. So that was the flute, Jeremy, and then explain this, this bank. Well, he just, he could see he could stop the ball and hold position for the six, so he liked his chances. That's more of a nine ball player's bank, that cross corner, and he hit it. He hit it perfect. He's an, always been an offensive player. You know, that's, you know, all these guys are, but even more so for the Iceman. And all these years of competing, and he still badly wants success. You saw the, the fist bump. He's up for this. Yeah, absolutely, and he's put in the time. You know, there for a few years, he played some of the bigger events, of course, but a lot of players don't realize that not only to stay in form, but to not only improve your game and get back in form, the smaller events really add up. And, you know, Mika's not going to, you know, some, some little small, small events, but he's gone to a lot of regional events back in the States, spent a lot of time playing different disciplines, which I think is helping his game overall. The 11th frack. He came on into break, five fracks each. And, uh, and definitely knows he has a run, not only here in the Whirlpool Masters, but you saw where he had SVB on the ropes there in the Whirlpool Championships, and if that match goes his way, you never know. 
Well, the two's gonna get up. I don't know if it's gonna be shootable or not. I th think it is. Maybe another, another bank shot. Looks awfully thin on the cut. Well, Jeremy, you were talking there about the match against SVB at the World Nine Ball Championship. That was the elephant in the room, wasn't it? He was 10-3 up, and he lost the last eight racks, and it was getting deep in that event. Must have been a heartbreaking loss, but he's trying to bounce back here. Has yeah. he been a little fortunate there? I don't think so. This this ball definitely plays up in the corner, and Ruiz, of course, has the power to draw the ball back. Doesn't need to come back too, too far. Maybe the middle dime be okay. And those cross-corner banks, you expect them to Expansion, spread sometimes, please. but when it's not much of a cut, it seems like on the slick table, it doesn't want to spread near like the players anticipate. It's the type of shot here. Stay heavy on it. You need a little nice draw. If you try to cut it a little bit, you could get on top of the three. Yeah, nice shot. Well, this is falling funny. And the only reason this is really falling funny is because of where the seven's at. Doesn't want to get too, too thin on the four, especially from seven or eight feet away. No, he can move the ball. It's a great camera view there. He can work it both backwards or forwards, really. Oh, look at the power this guy has. Really a little a la Mika Emin in there. <laughs> Mika shoots a very similar shot in that situation. Well, as you say, Jeremy, a great shot and a great camera angler to explain the power and the spin that enabled him to regain ideal position and from here he should be regaining the lead yeah and when we get the replay on that shot and i'm sure we will i want you to pay attention to the initial back cue ball and that and then after that is when the draw really takes and that's the that's the art of the shot is create the angle with the power right the, the like ricochet effect off the three and then then you'll see the draw really take place and start to arc the cue ball. So there it is, the most eye-catching shot, arguably, of the session, as placed. We all have to experience is our last break. We tend to, tend to want to let up a little bit, fearing, oh, I don't want to scratch on my last break, but the key is to stay strong, continue what you've been doing. Ruiz, the horse in his prime is still a young player, but a very, very smart, savvy vet, you could say. So he'll unload. Okay, we'll see what the 6-7 wants to do. Man, this has gotten fairly ugly on the right side of rail. And also ugly because the 2's a little covered up. Even if he could cut the 1 in, I don't think he can get movement on the cue ball. So unless he really wants to rip at this and try and open some balls up and create some movement, I think he's got to come off the top side of the one and make safety up behind the two and the five. 
He's... He can't really roll out, I don't think. I think he's going to take a swing at this. I don't think he's measuring the safety at all. Got to put some speed into this, so I know it's near the pocket, but it actually become, you know, I'd say it's not missable at all for this guy, maybe 2%, but since speed's going to be added, maybe it goes up to 10%, maybe. I'd reconsider this. You know, the 6.7 is, is really not a, the worst thing in the world for you, but if you make the one in 07 and snooker yourself, you might get your last turn at the table with a kick shot on the two. Oh, he got a nice double kiss. It's a 30 second shot clock and you've got one 30 second extension per rack and Francisco Sanchez Ruiz had so much thinking time there had to contemplate what to do. He took his extension immediately. I wonder if he contacts the 7-9 here. Oh, he put out a bunch of throw on, on that ball. I thought he may just address it with a high ball, but decided to try and spin it in and unfortunately missed it for the Spaniard. Eminent at the point, of course, where his next mistake should be his last mistake. Yeah, I don't know. He caught that much thinner than he wanted. Kind of waving his hand to the air like maybe the table didn't roll true there, but he was trying to bank the two up the side rail. I love that decision there. Just simply trying to get the run started without making any big errors. It's not as close to the four as some would have liked, but still very doable. Well, that's a pretty hot cue ball there. It's okay. The seven looks like it doesn't play in the side. Maybe, but it definitely plays in the upper left. The side would be a little easier. Always nervy at this juncture when a player is so close to victory. Yeah, well, that position there, it does play in the side. The side pockets here haven't been friendly, but he can cue the ball nicely, so shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, you would say that eight ball Mika missed the turning point in this match. Yeah, I would agree with that. He was four to ahead. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz looked in. A spot of bother, but not anymore. Ooh. He loved that. The result, the performance, the way it was finished off. He's a possible Moscone Cup contender for Europe this year. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz.